This video will discuss different approximations to the helium atom energy just to get you a feel of the, how these various approximate methods that we've discussed in the previous chapter, what kind of qualitative values they end up giving for this particular model system of interest. So for our helium atom, we have a nucleus which is fixed at the origin, two protons in there, so it has a charge of plus 2e, a mass of two protons and either one or two neutrons, depending on helium-3 or helium-4. We have two electrons. Their distances are R1n from the nucleus, R2n from the nucleus, R1, 2 from each other. So our Hamiltonian, we can actually factor into terms that depend just on electron 1, plus terms that depend just on electron 2, and then using atomic units, this repulsion of electron 1 from electron 2 is plus 1 over R12, a term that cannot be separated into a, pro into a term depending on either R1 or R2. So our Hamiltonian H1 and H2, those are the kinetic energy, minus 1 half del squared I, minus the potential energy, their attraction to the nucleus, minus 2 over Rin. So five terms total, each one has kinetic energy, each is attracted to the nucleus, and they repel each other. Our ground state wave function, the 1s orbital, psi100, remind ourselves is equal to the square root of z cubed, where z was the charge of the nucleus, now that's a 2, over pi times the Bohr radius, 0 0.529 angstroms, times e to the minus zr over a naught. So this would be minus 2r over 0.529 angstroms. In atomic units, this a naught would go away. All right, so what's our wave function going to be? Well, we'd like our wave function, which depends on the six-dimensional surface. It depends on the three Cartesian coordinates of electron 1 and the three Cartesian coordinates of electron 2. We'd like for that to be a product of of two functions that each depend on one electron individually. We'd like that to be electron 1 in our 1s orbital times electron 2 in our 1s orbital. So shorthand notation for that would be this here because it gets annoying writing out r1, r2, etc. every time so we might just use this instead representing coordinates of electron 1 and 2 or just 1 or just 2. So before we discuss these approximations, it's important to note that the experimental energy of the helium atom is negative 2.9033 Hartree's. So that is the energy of this system relative to this nucleus and these two electrons being infinitely far apart with zero kinetic energy. So if they're infinitely far apart with zero kinetic energy and you bring them to their minimum energy orientation, you will get an energy of negative 2.9033 Hartree's. They prefer interacting with each other by this amount. All right, so what is the energy of our system? The energy is an integral over all real numbers of all possible coordinates of electron one. So everywhere in space, integrate over x, y, and z of electron one. Integrate from minus infinity to infinity of x, y, and z of electron two of phi star 1, 2 times Hamiltonian times phi 1, 2. So same expectation value of our Hamiltonian operator. So remember if z equals 2 there, so if we set our Hamiltonian just equal to h1 and h2 and we ignore the repulsion of the electrons from one another, we get an energy which is negative 2 times z squared over 2 or negative 4 Hartree's. So if we just say that they're going to go in the 1s orbital, they're not going to repel each other, they're going to pretend like each elect other electron doesn't exist, we get an energy of 4 Hartree's, which is much lower than the actual value. That makes sense because this is a repulsion, so a repulsion should increase our energy and push us back up closer to this experimental value. A second approximation we could try is say, let's say instead of z being the charge of this nucleus, being an integer, let's treat it as a variational parameter. Let's use our whole Hamiltonian and let's calculate the energy as a function of z and then choose z such that the energy is minimized. So if we do that, the energy as a function of z is equal to z squared minus 27 over 8z 
take the derivative with respect to z of this, set it equal to zero, and the value of z you get ends up being 1.6875. So the energy that you end up getting in that case is equal to negative 2.848 Hartree's. So if you set the charge of the nucleus equal to a variational parameter, you get a value which has actually a decent approximation to the energy of the helium atom. Much better than if you don't have the electrons repel one another, but not quite as good as the experimental result. So this z of 1.6875, what this says is that the electrons don't really feel the full force of these two protons pulling them. The electrons shield each other a little bit, Note the effect called shielding that we talk about in Gen Chem. So here the effect of that shielding shows us that the effective charge of this nucleus that these electrons feel decreases by about 0.3 units of a charge of an electron. So these electrons are effectively seeing a nucleus of charge about 1.7. Next approach we could try is perturbation theory. So let's say that our reference Hamiltonian is H1 plus H2 the kinetic energy of each electron and their attraction to the nucleus. And let's treat 1 over R12, the hard part of this, as a perturbation. So our psi naught is just each electron being in the 1s orbital. So E naught, our reference Hamiltonian energy, is going to be negative 4 Hartree's, as we saw there. Then if we do first order perturbation theory, we'll do an integral which is called a Coulomb integral, which we'll discuss in the coming videos. Basically, the charge density of electron 1 feeling the charge density of electron 2 through this 1 over R12 operator. If you do first order perturbation theory, the first order correction is plus 1.250 Hartree's. In this 1s orbital, the energy that they repel each other with is 1.25 Hartree's. So first order perturbation theory gives you an energy of negative 2.75 Hartree's. Pretty good but this variational method did a better job and got closer. What about second order perturbation theory? Well, second order perturbation theory gets much, much closer. It gets negative 2.9077 Hartree's. And if you go to very high order perturbation theories, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th order, you get a number which gets very, very close to this experimental energy. Then lastly, there's a method which we'll discuss for the rest of the chapter on other atoms as well, and that energy is called the Hartree-Fock energy, which we'll spend several videos discussing. The Hartree-Fock energy for helium is negative 2.8617 Hartree's. So Hartree-Fock does a pretty good job at getting about 99% of the electron's energy, but that last 1% we're going to discuss is actually methods that need to go beyond Hartree-Fock. So there's a wide variety of methods with which you could use to approximate the energy of the helium atom, ranging from variational to perturbational to more complicated approaches. Uh, they give different values, some are better than others, but we can see that there are a wide variety of approaches, but it's this Hartree-Fock that we're going to end up exploring much, much more in this chapter.